He says, I just got a call. It should be noted, many record labels have deprioritized and signed rappers. The focus is now African music and Latin music. Rappers better stop being boring and talking about the same over and over, chasing TikTok success in comment sections. What Ebro is saying is the obvious. Understand, TikTok has ruined everything. Because it, an artist know the song that blow up on TikTok is not their best song, but they start putting all their energy into that song, and it's only relevant for five seconds on TikTok. All of you are unoriginal. Every one of y'all is making the same thing. There's no new ideas, using no new concept, loops, there's no new sound. The it's the same. It's all the same. Lips. They using the same ad libs, bro. It's a lot of them just be posting throwaways. They be songs like they can just hold on to and do better. Bro, Drake, Cole, and Kendrick like forty, and we have nobody in sight even fill the gap or the mold it looks like we just have a bunch of a tier rappers and it's everybody else who they just get a club hit for like a couple of months and move on we don't really identify with the artist no more like i used to be, I'd be like i used to say somebody artist i'd be like who the fuck is that i used to be like you know who he is i used to play three or four songs i'd be like oh that's who made that mm. whereas before when we was coming up we identify with an artist now take a guess who's fallen off right now not a particular artist i'm talking about the music industry yeah music is over it's over streaming bro so with you know what i mean it's cool i get it but like, it's over with. most artists or most new artists at least in hip-hop they're being made by TikTok. 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 Everything that goes up must come down, and hip hop is no exception to this rule. In the present day, it's extremely obvious that hip hop is a shell of its former glory. There are fewer and fewer huge records, albums aren't hitting the way they used to and fans are losing interest. For the past six months, all types of videos have been uploaded, talking about how the genre is dying and listing various theories for why this is happening. This isn't the first time people have felt this way about the trajectory of the genre, but this time, it really might be true. But in order to get to the root cause of the situation current hip hop is facing, we have to look at the years that have led us here. So in this video, we'll take a look at the downward spiral mainstream rap has found itself in over the past four years. These videos do take a lot of time to put together, so if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please consider doing so. We'll start in 2019, because this was the last normal year the genre had. In 2019, hip hop was in a good place. There was a wide variety of all different types of artists and songs seeing success, and the fans were engaged with everything. There were a good number of Billboard Top 10 hits, like Shook by The Baby, Tatiana by Blueface, Ransom by Lil Tecca, Bandit by Juice World and NBA Youngboy, and the most sold record in the history of music, Old Town Road. Outside of Billboard Top 10, there were plenty of other huge records that contributed to the excitement rap had at the time, and these included songs like Shot of Flow by NLE Choppa, Act Up by The City Girls, Ballin' by DJ Mustard and Roddy Rich, and Welcome to the Party in Dior by Pop Smoke. There was an exciting crop of new stars, including people like Lil Baby, Gunna, The Baby, Juice World, Meg Thee Stallion, Pop Smoke, Roddy Rich, Polo G, Lil TJ, NLE Choppa, and more. And hip hop was in an exciting space. TikTok had just started blowing up, and the success of Old Town Road had proven it could be a powerful marketing tool. Towards the end of the year, the genre had experienced a tragedy when Juice World lost his life at the young age of 21. But besides this, 2019 was an overall good year. First turn nigga from the hood, they curious. Four and cry about five and jury. I get the comments with number this period. I got your being one put on the mirror. 2020 started off regular. The box by Roddy Rich saw crazy success and dominated the charts early on. In February, tragedy struck when Pop Smoke lost his life in a Cali Airbnb at the young age of 20. About a week after this, Lil Baby dropped My Turn, which did numbers 
and to this day is probably his best album ever. Shortly after my turn, Uzi shocked everybody and surprise dropped his long-awaited album, Eternal at Tape, which did well but left some fans disappointed and was the beginning of people wanting the quote-unquote old Uzi back. Eternal Attack was an early example of a new trend. Labels were starting to implement a new strategy where they had artists drop an album, then two weeks later release a deluxe album with an entire album worth of new songs to maximize the streams. Since 2017, streaming had become the number one source of label revenue, and as the years passed, they had continued to try to figure out how to maximize the new model. Shortly after Eternal to Take, the whole world was put on standstill when COVID hit, forcing everyone into quarantine. Quarantine was a weird time for everyone, especially rappers who now found themselves stuck at home, unable to do shows. Some people took advantage of the opportunity to do new things with the large audience stuck inside. Tory Lanez started a regular IG live stream that he called Quarantine Radio, and Swiss Beats and Timbaland started Versus, a head-to-head -head competition between hip-hop and R&B artists that started on Facebook and IG Live and later transitioned to real venues. As far as the actual music release, albums from some of the biggest rappers during quarantine included Blame It On Baby by The Baby, Wanna by Gunna, The Goat by Polo G, High Off Life by Future, and Sugar by Meg Thee Stallion. Similarly to 2019, 2020 also had a lot of big hits. Lil Baby, writing out the success of My Turn, had two of the biggest records of 2020 with We Paid featuring 42 Doug and The Bigger Picture. Life is Good by Future and Drake and Rockstar by The Baby and Roddy Rich were also Billboard Top 10 hits. And the most talked about and controversy generating record of the year, WAP by Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, also made a ton of noise. In 2020, Meg's name was also hot from a situation that occurred with her and Tory Lanez as well as two other people where she was shot in the foot. She said that Tory was responsible, and Tory said he wasn't, and the situation got tons of media coverage and was one of the biggest topics of that entire year. From 2019 to 2020, TikTok's influence had continued to grow, and the platform was now a legitimate new path to having a hot record. New artists were popping on the regular, and the term TikTok rapper was starting to become a thing. More established artists were also taking advantage of the new platform to blow their songs up as well. Unfortunately, the rise of TikTok also came with negative side effects. And as a result of the way content was consumed, rappers began making songs shorter and more repetitive in an effort to potentially get TikTokers to make viral challenges to their song. Drake was one of the first big artists to be called out for this when he dropped Tusi Slide. In late 2020, King Vaughn lost his life in an altercation with Quando Rondo in Atlanta, and Playboy Cardi dropped Whole Lot of Red, a long-awaited album that received mixed reviews. One of the more unexpected trends of 2020 was the extreme rate that podcasts began growing in popularity. Up into 2020, there were already a few established podcasts like the JBP and Drink Champs, but a whole new wave of pods joined in the period between 2019 and 2020, including shows like Million Dollars Worth of Game, Big Facts, and the Expeditiously Podcast. In 2020, the podcast space began taking off as more and more people began listening to podcasts and more and more rappers, athletes, and other types of celebrities began starting new ones. 2020 was unorthodox, but definitely not a bad year for rap. But 2021 would be the first major indicator that things were slowing down. This song already was turned, but here's a bell.
in early 2021, one name started popping up everywhere. Pooh Shiesty had begun buzzing in late 2020 off his hit record Back in Blood featuring Lil Durk. By 2021, this record was everywhere and Shiesty was one of rap's biggest up and coming stars. Another emerging artist during this time was Coyle Ray, who was buzzing off of her hit record, No More Parties, as well as the fact that she was an easy punching bag for internet trolls. Early 2021 also saw a deadly beef spilling over into rap when Young and Ace, Spinner Benz, Wapa with the Chopper, and Fast Money Goon released a song called Who I Smoke dissing a ton of their deceased ops on a catchy pop sample. A combination that led to the song going crazy, racking up tens of millions of views and becoming a viral hit. Early 2021 had a decent amount of motion, but as the year progressed, an alarming trend began to emerge. Throughout the year, plenty of albums dropped from the biggest artists in the game, but the music wasn't hitting the same and the fans weren't receptive to it. Polo G dropped Hall of Fame, Migos dropped Culture 3, and Roddy Ridge dropped Live Life Fast, but all of these projects were labeled as mid by the majority of listeners. Lil Baby and Lil Durk's collab album, Voice of the Heroes, and J. Cole's mixtape, The Off Season, were received slightly better, but Tyler the Creator probably had the best project of the year with Call Me If You Get Lost a great body of music that was received well by fans. In July, the baby went to Rolling Loud and did this. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone like that up. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking in the parking lot, put your cell phone like that up. Real, he got the usual cancel culture treatment, including a bunch of blog posts and angry tweets, but things went a step further than usual and festivals began removing him from their lineups, affecting his money. From summer to fall of 2021, one of the biggest storylines in hip hop for the entire year began to develop. Both Drake and Kanye announced they were dropping albums and then began escalating their beef. Kanye built the hype around Donda doing listening events in several cities throughout the summer before dropping the album August 29th. Drake followed dropping Certified Lover Boy a week later. Despite the hype around these projects, most people ended up coming to the conclusion that both albums were underwhelming, just like most of the other music coming out in 2021. The trend of TikTok popularized songs continued and things were so easy that even Soulja Boy, who hadn't been relevant for anything related to his music in over a decade, popped out with not just one, but two viral TikTok hits. The easy virality on TikTok was allowing tons of new artists to blow up on a regular basis, but because there were so many, this meant that nothing was really sticking. There was just a rotating window giving countless artists five seconds of fame, then moving on to the next. So, a unique situation was developing where, despite it being easier than ever for songs to blow up, there were fewer and fewer new artists with the same excitement The Baby, NLE Choppa, Pop Smoke, and others had just a few years prior. Given the fact that no new artists were blowing up on a major scale and none of the existing artists were delivering the way they did in the past, the charts reflected that mainstream hip hop was in a lull with Billboard Top 10 hits experiencing a significant decline from the previous year. Mainstream hip hop was clearly declining, but there was one artist able to cut through the TikTok noise and blow up on a huge scale. In late summer, an artist called Yeet started buzzing off a song called Sorry About That that went crazy on TikTok. Then he followed this up with an even bigger one called Get Busy. With these viral hits, he was arguably the biggest new artist of 2021, even receiving a co-sign from Drake. Yeet was part of a new wave in a subgenre referred to as Rage, and other artists like Ken Carson, Can Can, and Destroy Lonely were all new artists in this lane, blowing up this same year, seeing more traction 
than the typical artist on TikTok. Also, up in New York, Bronx Drill was blowing up with artists like K Flock, B Love, and D Thing doing numbers leading the underground scene. So, overall, 2021 was a bad year for the mainstream, but it was good for a few underground niches. 2021 was also good for another form of entertainment that was just starting to touch the hip hop world. Streaming had been a thing for years, but it was something mainly for gamers. However, in 2021, people like Kai Sinat, Duke Dennis, Aiden Ross, Your Age, and Bruce Drop Em Off popularized streaming with a different demographic that aligned more with the audience of hip hop consumers. With the decline of hip hop, a lot of kids and teenagers who in previous years would have been hardcore rap fans were now turning to streamers as their primary source of entertainment and looking up to streamers the way kids in the past looked up to rappers. Aiden Ross's streams ended up getting so big that through 2021, he had a lot of the biggest rappers out lining up to come on and promote their music on his platform. Going into 2022, hip hop's mainstream drought would continue. Gunna would start the year off strong, dropping DS Forever, a solid project with the breakout hit, Push and P. It was a good project, but an example of how streaming had been continuing to affect the length of albums. DS Forever was 20 songs long by itself with no deluxe included. The new length of albums meant that mediocre songs that wouldn't have made the cut in previous years were slipping through the cracks for the sheer purpose of increasing streaming time. Lil Durk's 7220 album was a perfect example of this, containing 31 songs in total, 17 in the original, and 14 additional ones on the deluxe version. In April, Pusha Ice-T was sentenced to five years, a deal that wasn't bad considering the possible time he could have received, but still meant hip hop would be losing one of his newest stars early into his career. Then in May, the whole hip hop world was caught by surprise when Young Thug, Gunna, and 26 other members of YSL were indicted in a RICO case that stretched back almost a decade. This same month, Kendrick returned from a five-year hiatus, dropping Mr. Morale, an album which was successful, but not at the level of his previous albums. Future also dropped I Never Liked You, an album which saw a large amount of success with the hit single Wait For You going number one on Billboard. 2022 also saw the rise of a few new faces. In July, a Memphis artist called Glorilla blew up off a song called FNF. Then in late summer, a song called Munch by an artist named Ice Spice started blowing up on TikTok. It was initially taken as a joke, but it grew on people and Ice Spice continued dropping and growing her popularity. In late 2022, Kanye went on his most career damaging rampage ever, which all started with the picture he took with Candace Owens wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt. After this, he made an appearance on Drink Champs, where he said that George Floyd OD'd on fentanyl and announced that he had problems with a group of people he referred to as the Jewish higher ups. He received strong backlash, but being Kanye, he doubled down on his stance and basically went on a press run defending his comments and continuing to make more and more controversial statements that the media was having a field day reporting on. Eventually, things would end up getting to the point where he was dropped from his Adidas deal. Meanwhile, in late 2022 on the music scene, Lil Baby dropped It's Only Me, his first solo album since my turn. And the album had an underwhelming response and was yet another example of an album optimized for streaming instead of quality. In December, Drake and 21 Savage teamed up to drop a collab tape titled Her Loss, which ended up being a very successful release. Also in December, Gunna accepted a plea deal and came home, and video came out about what he had admitted to get this deal.
Yes, ma'am. You were present when law enforcement officers stopped the vehicle in which you were present along with Jeffrey Williams, where in high school, and a firearm were recovered. These items did not belong to you. Yes, ma'am. Some people argued it was in a gray area that wasn't technically snitching, but the majority of hip hop labeled him a rat and most of his former rapper friends unfollowed him and distanced themselves, the most notable being Lil Baby. The Gunna situation was one of the biggest things to happen in hip hop that year and this was more evidence of the genre's decline in popularity. Meanwhile, the growing appetite for podcasts and streaming continued with the biggest podcasts and streamers growing at a crazy rate. In 2022, Kai Sinat took the place of Aiden Ross when it came to having the biggest rappers on his stream, bringing people like Blueface and Krishan Rock, Ice Spice, Lil Baby, and 21 Savage. In 2023, mainstream rap slump became extremely obvious. Very few artists even dropped music. The first notable albums didn't come until summer. In June, Uzi returned from a three-year hiatus and dropped The Pink Tape, another album with way too many songs that came and went like the majority of other albums from the previous two years. This same month, Gunner released The Gift and the Curse, his first album since he told and came home. In order to keep the fans on his side, he had to drop a banger, and this was exactly what he did, delivering a quality album with no features. In July, Travis Scott dropped his long-awaited album, Utopia, which was extremely successful, doing 500,000 units the first week. Besides a gift and a curse and Utopia, most of 2023's mainstream albums were mediocre, and projects like Almost Healed by Lil Durk, Hard to Love by Moneybag Yo, and set it off by Offset, came and went. 2023 also didn't see any new artists going nearly as viral as Ice Spice, Gorilla, Yeet, or Pusha T did in 2022 and 2021. The most viral new artist of 2023 was Sexy Red, who began trending towards the later half of the year. By this point, it was undeniable that things were definitely in a slump for the genre and YouTube channels began popping out left and right, talking about how hip hop was dying and speculating the true reason behind it. The answer can be seen by looking at the last four years. There's no one specific reason and a variety of factors have contributed to the decline. Up and coming stars got locked up or passed. Many artists began making music focusing on streaming numbers or TikTok success instead of quality music. There wasn't much innovation to the mainstream sound, and as a result, things began to feel like the majority of producers were making the same beat over and over, and rappers were making the same song again and again. The trendy 15 second clip variety of TikTok made it harder for artists to build an actual fan base, and as a result, more artists experienced the trend of having five seconds of their song blow up for a couple of weeks and then being irrelevant in a matter of months. And as a result of all the music being cycled through on a regular basis, artists not making music optimized for social media struggled to cut through all the noise. All of this turned into fans losing interest in rap music. And while hip hop music has been declining, podcasts and live streaming have been skyrocketing, taking up the attention formerly reserved for music. Streamers are getting NBA-sized contracts and building fan bases that match the loyalty of artists like XXXTentacion and NBA Youngboy. The youth has always fueled hip-hop, but these days they're more interested in watching Twitch and Kick. This is definitely not the end of hip-hop, but it may be the end of its chokehold on the mainstream. And we may never see hip-hop regain the chokehold it's had on pop culture over the past decade or so. The genres had a great run, but nothing lasts forever.